Hi, this is Marius van Lammers and this is Long Story Short, month 11. Today, we're going to be talking about equity. I was engaged not too long ago to prepare a, a feasibility study for a multi-million euro investment here in Cyprus. It was a very interesting experience, not because of the size and complexity of the project, but also because, because I got the chance to cooperate with experts from many different fields and countries. Being the head of the project meant uh, that I had to fuse together the inputs from all these uh, counterparties to the project and produce a result that would make financial, operating and strategic sense. A result that would allow the CEOs of the consortium behind the proposed investment to make an informed decision with confidence, well, as much confidence one can have in predicting the future, <laughs> that the, with their confidence that all material aspects of the project had been examined by experts. And so a time came when the parties uh, participating in the project arranged a meeting and I took center stage to present the key outtakes from the project. And I started talking. I wasn't even prepared. After a year working on it, <laughs> this project had become my little baby. I knew it inside and out. And then comes a time when I start talking about the financing options, at which point one of the attendees interrupted me and said, Marius, what is equity? Could you please define it so I can, <laughs> so I can follow you? And so after taking a few moments that felt like a century to be, uh, to be perfectly fair, to realize that the question was actually legit, that it was a real question, and that this wasn't some kind of joke that I didn't understand, I replied. And I replied using plain English. Because I, if I cannot explain to someone who has never had finance experience before, that man was an engineer, mind you, if I cannot explain a technical term in plain English to someone who cannot understand, then this is probably an indication that uh, I do not know what I'm talking about either, right? Like the kind of people who work in the IT industry. I know I may be overgeneralizing here, but listen to this example. Not too long ago, I was looking for a new IT support company to help me with running the website of MN Consulting. And so I contacted three different IT firms and asked them a series of questions. And they all replied using way too many technical terms. So I reverted saying, you know what? I cannot understand this and this and this and this. Please explain. Give me to understand what you're talking about. And their replies contained even more technical terms. And so I didn't change my IT company. I stayed with the same company because even if I have complaints about their service levels, at least I have tried them and know that I can live with this specific level of service. And so here's my question to you, to the rest of you. If you cannot give someone who cannot understand technical uh, terms of your work, if you cannot give such a person to understand your value proposition, how are you going to gain new customers? By not being the worst of the lot? By being lucky? <laughs> if that's the case, then you shouldn't complain when things start going sound for you. Should you? <laughs> and not only that, I'm, not, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm even, I'm generally knowledgeable when it comes to computers. One of my favorite pastimes is building my own tower PCs. It may take me a couple of days to finish the job that an expert would finish in, say, a couple of hours, but at least I understand the basics of computing. And they couldn't let even me understand what they were talking about. Conversely, someone asked me the other day to define in the glossary of one of my reports a word that he couldn't, couldn't understand. And I said, you know what? No, I won't define it. And the reason why I said no was because the reason why that person didn't understand that word was because he was illiterate. Simple as that. It wasn't a technical term, so no definition for you, my friend, sorry. There has to be a red line. You have to stop somewhere. You cannot define everything. 
So to cut, to cut a long story short, here's my simple advice to you. If something is a technical term, you should be able to define it using plain English or whatever other language it is that you're using to communicate in. But if one word is not a technical term, then you should refuse to define it. You should stand your ground. You should hold back. You should refuse to lower your standards to cater to other people's illiteracy. Hi there, this is Marius van Lamus and I just wanted to address a quick question that came through on my website. Someone asked me if I'm still active on Twitter. The answer is yes and the reason I'm making this video is because I really found this question uh, very odd because uh, I actually microblog on Twitter on a daily basis. Uh, from our discussion what I realized is that that particular user was uh, visiting my website through his mobile phone and so contrary to what you see when you're visiting my website on a PC where my Twitter plugin is appearing on the on the right side on mobile phones it's right at the bottom so you have to swipe down all the way to the bottom to see my uh, Twitter plugin so yes I do remain active on Twitter I do microblog there on a daily basis and uh, in just in less than four months that uh, my Twitter account has been active we have almost 50 or more uh, followers depending <laughs> on when this video will, will air many of them are influencers in their fields many others are just curious souls if you will or just interested in my work but yes I do remain active on Twitter and be sure to swipe down all the way or if you're visiting my website on your mobile to see my Twitter feed. Thank you very much and uh, have an absolutely fantastic day.